Greetings, everyone. This is Donna Gilliland, founder of MOST Training. And the MOS of MOST Training stands for Mobile Office and Social Media Training. I am Master Certified in Microsoft Office, and I have a power tip for you today on Microsoft Excel formulas. And that is the learning of the differences between relative versus absolute cell referencing. And in the 25 years of teaching Microsoft Excel to the corporate world, this is an area of formula writing that people still struggle with. But hopefully after this brief video, you won't struggle with understanding the differences between the two. The very first thing to understand are these terms, relative. Whenever you and I are copying formulas in Excel, unless we specify otherwise through the writing of the formula, which you're about to learn, the formulas are always going to be copied relative to where uh, you are at. For example, if I copy a formula across in a spreadsheet, Excel will always focus on column letters. So if I come across, Excel is going to relatively change the column letter. It will increment it upward. Now if I copy a formula down, then Excel, keep this in mind, row numbers run vertically down the screen. So if you copy a formula vertical fashion, then Excel is going to increment the row number, in other words, change the row number, in each cell that you copy that formula to. And so, so for the most part, we stay in that relative mode, but there are some very specific times and reasons why you need it to be absolute. Let's start with relative first on this simple spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet, a testing spreadsheet with salespeople, and I want to add up the numbers for January. That'll be super simple. That's just a matter of placing the or activating the cell B9 to get these numbers added up. And then from the home ribbon to the far right in the last group editing, I can just double click auto sum, and that automatically adds all the numbers up above. I'm going to open up the formula so you can see. It's, it's going to be a talking point for us, a very brief one. When a double clicking that cell that had the total, now the formula is in front of me and I can see that the formula is using the sum function and that it is adding up the numbers that are in B4 all the way through B8. Now, I don't want to go to each cell after that. I could have 10 more columns after that that needed adding up and I want to take the quick route of copying. But keep this in mind. The point to this activity is what happens when you copy a formula to the right, in other words, column-wise, because columns run across. What happens if you copy a formula column-wise? What is Excel going to change relatively? Is it going to be the column letter or the row number? Well, it's going to be the column letter. So right now, your formula says B4 colon B8. So it's a B column B. But I'm about to copy to the right, and that will be column C. So the formula will change to say, relatively change, to say C4 colon C8. So let me go ahead and take this out of edit mode and copy over. A quick way to copy a formula over is in the lower right corner of any cell is a small uh, square, maybe a black square on yours, depending upon your color scheme. In my case, it's a green square. But the point is, this autofill square is in every single cell when, that is active in Excel. Go into the lower right corner of this active cell until the black plus sign appears. Now I can click, hold, and drag two cells to the right so that this formula will be copied two cells to the right. But in the copying process, it's being changed relative to where I copy to. And since I'm copying across, that's column wise. So let's look back and see. Let's go to the second one and I'll open it up and there it is. It is changing the column letter. So what once said, uh, at least at the starting point, said B4 colon B8, it's now changed to reference only column C. It's not changing any row numbers because we didn't copy row wise. We're still in this same row we're just changing column position. So that's what's meant by relative referencing. And that's the default for Excel, relative. You are the one that has to specify in your formula whether it should be absolute. That's what we're about to do. Absolute simply means don't change my 
row reference or my column reference, whatever the need might be. So we'll start off with the total column. In the total column, this formula's purpose is to add up all of these numbers for the first quarter, and then these salespeople get commissioned by 10%, which I have in cell I1. So let's get started with this one part of it. I do know that I need to add up all these numbers. I'm using a sum function. I want to add up all these numbers, and if you look at my screen, what I've selected, it's saying that it's going to add up B4 colon D4, and of course I'm using a function, and I'm going to cap it with a closed paren because I'm about to multiply against something. So the parentheses, I want it to add up all the numbers first, and then multiply by a cell, the contents of a cell I have. So using the asterisk, and I'm going to come here to I1 and choose 10%. Now look at my formula. It says equal sum B4 colon D4 times the contents of I1. Now, this, this is the first quarter sales for Tom. But based upon relative referencing, if you leave this like it is, and you press enter, and then you copy down, well, when I come down, we're coming row-wise. Remember, row numbers run vertically down the screen. So on the way down, B4 would become B5. D4 would become D5, and that picks up Mike's sales. And that's great. That's what I want. But because of relative referencing, I1 will also change row reference. It'll become I2. There's nothing in I2. And if I recall, in elementary school, if you multiply something by nothing, it equals nothing. I'll let you see how it works if you don't make the proper change. I'll go ahead and press enter, and I would get this person's sales. The problem will be when I go to copy for everybody else. So I'm going to use the autofill handle. And when you're copying vertical, by the way, the autofill handle, if you double click, it will bring the formula all the way down and you won't have to click and drag. But it only works that way on, on a, a vertical copy. So go ahead and double click and copy and look. Nobody else has any pay. And here's why. Let's go to the first one where there is no number. I'll open up the formula by double clicking. Well, it has performed all relative referencing. It does now say D5 colon D5. I wanted that part because I wanted to pick up Mike's numbers. I did want it to pick up relative to the new row. But when it came to multiplying by the percentage, which is an I1, well, I'm copying down, so I1 changed to I2. And there's nothing in I2, so everybody else gets no uh, commission as a result. Here's the resolve. This is how the formula should have been done in the beginning, and then we're about to wrap up. I go back to the formula and open it up, and here's what should have been done. Since the formula is being copied vertical, and we are working row-wise, then it is the row number that I need to make absolute, meaning I want to lock it in so that Excel won't do what Excel usually does when copying, say, vertically it changes the row number. Here's how it would work. In between the I and the one reference in the formula, the dollar sign is the symbol used to indicate absolute referencing, which is the signal to Excel to not perform in a relative way as it always does. So I'll put in a dollar sign, and the reason why the dollar it precedes the one of I1 is because it's the one that I don't want to become two, three, four in terms of row numbers. Now another way to put in the dollar signs is using function key F4. Function key F4 is a cycling key, meaning that the first time you press function key F4, it would give you dollar signs preceding the column and the row, or you can just manually type it in. So now it says I dollar one, and that means one won't become two on the way down. I'll go ahead and press enter to modify the formula, and then I'll go back and copy it again using the autofill, black plus sign in place, double click, and there it is. So let's look. Here's 90,000 commission for uh, Mike. I'm going to open up the formula, and sure enough, it is still multiplying by I1. Everything else I've left relative because I needed it to pick up a new row of numbers every time, but I needed it to multiply by that same 10% 
every single time, which is located in I1. And that's why the formula in the beginning needed to be an I dollar one. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that the next time you have to create a formula and make it absolute, you'll have much more clarity than you did before this brief video. So again, this is Donna Gilliland, founder of Most Training. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, visit me on Facebook if you'd like, facebook.com uh, forward slash most training. Have a great week. More tips coming your way soon. It's bye for now.